Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our next session of our WeHa Wednesday webinar. For those of you that joined us a few minutes early, I apologize that we didn't have our waiting room set up. And so you got to hear a little bit of the behind the scenes stuff that um, we go through each month to make sure that uh, everyone can screen share properly and you guys can hear them as well. So a few announcements before I turn it over is um, this is our last WeHa Wednesday webinar of 2023. Uh, so we always take off in December and then we'll come back in January with a, another fresh um, topic for you. And next year we will be switching platforms as well. Um, we have we'll be going to Teams instead of having um, Zoom. So we're going to test that out and see how it works. So if we have a few hiccups here and there, we ask that you please be patient with us as we make that uh, transition. Another new thing is that I will no longer be the face of the WeHa Wednesday webinars. Um, I am turning that over, bringing in Brian Long. So Brian, would you mind uh, just saying hello to everyone real quick. No, good morning. I'm Brian. I'm out in Pierce County, way out on the western edge. Um, yeah, looking forward to it. We'll, uh, it, it, your invite, I haven't quite got the invitation part of Teams straightened out, so it, it most likely will come from an education, will be the, the email that's inviting you versus Carrie from now on. Um, it will just say education, education, weha. Um, so it's going to look a little different. Um, and we'll get those lined up for January. <clears throat> Thank you, Brian, for taking this on. It's very exciting to pass the torch on to someone new. I, I'm excited to see what Brian does uh, moving forward with launching these into an even more fabulous webinar series. Um, so just a couple little notes before I turn it over yet again here is don't forget to mute yourself um, so we do so that we're not hearing a bunch of feedback. Uh, we do want to try to interrupt our presenters as little as possible. Um, and if you haven't checked out our our YouTube channel, please do so. And then also weha.net is an area that you can go to to become a member um, so that you are always getting these invites um, and all the other resources that we have has to offer. So now I will turn it over to Lindsay to present our speakers. All right. So today we have Carlene Buckmaster and Humphrey Sashone presenting to you. Carlene is a social worker with the La Crosse County Health Department. Uh, she's a Viterbo University graduate with a bachelor's degree in social work and minors in both sociology and family studies. Prior to starting this newly created position back in February of 2022, Carlene worked with La Crosse County Human Services Comprehensive Community Services Program. She brings her experience with mental health, trauma, and person-centered work to the partnership with our sanitarian inspectors. Humphrey Sashone is a sanitarian with the La Crosse County Health Department, and prior to starting as a sanitarian, he worked as an inpatient pharmacy tech at Gunderson Health System and as a quality assurance lab technician in the dairy department at Quick Trip. Humphrey received his bachelor's degree in public health at Northern Arizona University, and he loves what he does as a sanitarian because he meets people with diverse backgrounds. Take it away, Carlene and Humphrey. All right, Lindsay, uh, thank you so much for the introduction. And um, I thank uh, everybody for having us. Yeah, so um, I'm excited. And um, in December, I'll be talking two years working as a sanitarian. Yay. <laughs> I love what I do. And I feel like I found a niche. Um, one of my favorite things about the job is that um, I'm, not, I'm not stuck in the office. I, I, I get up to like interact with the uh, public while in the field. Yeah, not everything is bread and butter about the job, but um, we, we try by all means like to uh, meet all the challenges and make sure everything goes right. Yeah. Um, other than inspecting mobile homes, tattoo establishments and hotels, I'm also in charge of uh, housing complaints. 
Yeah, in, in order to tackle some of the challenges we face during home visits, we added a social worker, as, as Lindsay introduced her, her name is Karin. Yeah, so to, to our department, Karin, she, she's been a, like a, a game changer. She tags along uh, for filthy and uh, spider complaints. And it's been very helpful because um, she, she let me do my job as a sanitarian, like during the inspection while she's um, talking to the client. Uh, sometimes she goes with me to other complaints such as mold, mice, cockroaches, and bed bugs, so she can at least uh, broaden her horizon or to provide social support to the clients. Because um, if somebody's complaining about bed bugs, you know, there are like a lot of uh, uh, things going on like in their brain, like, you know, these bed bugs are very harmful to me, blah, blah, blah. So Kalin will be there for, for the support. Yeah, so um, it has been a game changer, like I said, having social worker because um, we work with clients and make them clean their houses or apartments to avoid condemnation. Like when, um, when I started my job, we just go out and uh, meet the client. And then if the house is very filthy, the house will be condemned. and. Uh, uh, I, I didn't know much about the resources available here in La Crosse. So having the social worker like who um, meets with uh, other organizations to get more information, uh, it's been um, very helpful because uh, she's there to provide support. Yeah, Aline spends time with the client while I'm uh, inspecting their house or apartment. She asks a lot of questions, trying to find out if the client is connected to any services like here in Macross. Uh, if not, she informs the client about resources available in our county. Our department um, is enjoying the benefits of having a social worker around. And um, I also encourage um, other counties like to do the same because um, it will be also helpful for the clients. Yeah, so I'm not going to waste my time over here taking all the time for Karin. Um, I'll hand over to Karin so she can tell us everything about what she does. Thank you so much. Thank you for the warm introduction. Um, can everybody hear me and see my first slide? Humphrey? Yes, we can. <laughs> okay, thank you. I'm probably the least tech savvy person, so I'm just excited that it's on there. I recognize that you can see all the slides on the side, but uh, we're just going to go with it today because I'm not a presenter, so I'm just going to start with that. Um, but I, I love what I do, and um, I'm very excited to share about what Humphrey and I do, um, and I, I think that he started with a, a very good introduction. Um, I, I feel like we complement one another. You know, first of all, there's there's a few differences. You know, he's he's a man. I'm a woman. Um, we are of different ethnicity and we are of different backgrounds. So I feel like we complement one another. And when we go into homes, we're we're well received and we can work off of one another and with one another. Um, oftentimes, we'll go out just with with a a, a blank um, with a blank slate. You know, we. We may have a little bit of background on what we're walking into. Um, the other day, Humphrey had a little sticky note with a couple scribbles. Um, I think we had an address and just a, a brief description of why we were going out. So um, every day is different. Every client's different. There's no textbook. We're just kind of doing um, the best we can and using what we what we know and what we learn from each person. So. Um, the the thing that I found is that there really are no hoarding specialists locally. There's not a lot of hoarding specialists or resources, period. So it makes it very difficult to do what we do, but I feel like it's a win. And not only is it unique, but it's it's working. Um, it's not easy by any means, but it's it's working. And, and we're seeing that by the people that we work with. So um, compliments to my husband for the funny title, um, WTF, where's the floor? Because oftentimes we walk in and you can't see the floor. So um, I, I felt a little uneasy to use it because as a social worker, 
I, I don't use the words like fill, swell, or hoarding any of that with, um, with the clientele. So it's just meant to be kind of a lighthearted um, joke. So please, I hope no one takes offense to it. It's, it's meant in good humor. Um, so again, my name is Carlene Buckmaster, social worker with the health department. And I have been doing this since February of last year. Um, Humphrey Sichone is typically the sanitarian I'm going out with. There are a couple other sanitarians that I have um, done response calls with, but typically it's Humphrey and I. So um, just to kind of jump into the presentation, um, what do they need? How can we help? Um, so I, I like to ask, do they have a social worker or a case manager that they're currently working with? Because everyone is of different backgrounds. You know, they are of different financial backgrounds, um, different cognitive abilities, um, different physical abilities. So they could have a social worker for mental health, physical health, um, whatnot. They may not. Um, they may not qualify for one. So um, if they do have someone that they're currently working with, I try to team with them and make sure that everybody's on the same page. Um, do they have health insurance? Do they have food share? Um, do they qualify for WIC if they have children under the age of five? Are they food insecure? Um, do they have energy assistance? Um, and if they don't and they qualify, I help with that so that they're able to sign up and afford their housing. Housing is hard to find um, at a reasonable rate in our area. So anything that I can think of to help them afford life in general, whether it's food, resources, basic needs of any sort. Um, so I am coming in with the social worker lens, um, but also learning a lot as I'm going. Um, so I can come in and talk to the person while Humphrey does his walkthrough inspection. Um, very rarely will we walk through together. I typically will separate and, and talk to the person and try to build that relationship with them and learn more about it. Like, who knows about this? How long has it been like this? What would you like your home to be like? Um, try to pull out some things from them, sort of a motivational interviewing type um, of communication. Um, do they qualify for mental health services or resources or do they need it? You know, with the ADRC, they're 18 um, through end of life. So are there things that they qualify for finances or services. Um, I did come from the CCS program, Comprehensive Community Services. So with that, you have to have an AODA or mental health diagnosis and um, Medicaid, Medicare for um, qualifying for that program. Family care, very similar requirements, um, just a little different. So they have vendors that they work with for like one-on-one -on -one support, different types of um, therapy and um, peer support type services. Um, 988, not everyone is aware of that. That just started last year in June, um, June or July, I believe June. Um, it's a three digit number. That's why we have to use our area codes and when we even call locally. Uh, it's 24 seven, you can call and get support, whether it's um, speaking to somebody on the phone, talking or texting um, in any type of crisis. And people who we're working with in these types of calls oftentimes struggle with crisis and um, you may run into suicidal statements, suicidal thoughts. Um, if you condemn my home, I'm going to light my house on fire. You know, it can be pretty scary. So um, just making sure that you're teaming this and making sure that they are um, talking this through, you're, you're kind of seeing where they're at, getting them help, um, just making sure that you are building that relationship and that they understand that you're a support to them, that you're trying to work with them. Um, home items, kitchen, bedroom, bathroom, living room, we have resources locally where we can help get them items that they don't have, or if they're soiled or broken down, um, just not salvageable. I really try to encourage them to purge those items so that we can replace them. And um, I have access to those for free. So we, um, they're secondhand, they're donated, but um, go ahead and, and purge those items to make your home safe and sanitary. And, and we can go ahead and help you get those items replaced. Um, basic needs, things like clothes, shelter, help with expenses. Um, are they a veteran? And if any of you on the call are a veteran, um, happy Veterans Day coming up here at the end of the week. Thank you for your service. Um, but if they are a veteran, I try to connect them to veteran services um, just to have that um, that camaraderie, that support, um, it, it is a unique population. 
um, have they been diagnosed with breast cancer? And I ask that because we have a unique fund available at La Crosse County for La Crosse County women specifically diagnosed with breast cancer. So trying to use the resources that we have available. Um, let's see, I, there we go. I was blocking my, my words. <laughs> um, so I don't know how many of you had attended Carla Alejo's sessions on hoarding. Um, she had two sessions and if you did not attend either or both of them, I encourage you to try to do that. Um, so I just kind of copied this because I didn't want to be repetitive of what she had shared, but good reminders. So some indicators of hoarding, excessive amount of items which appear useless to most people. Um, rooms are significantly cluttered and the items prevent activities for which the space was designed. So are they able to sit on their couch? Are they able to eat at their kitchen table? Are they able to sleep on their bed? Things of that sort. Um, the individual feels significant despair or stress caused by the clutter. And the clutter might not be causing them stress. It might be their landlord. It might be their kids, their neighbors, us saying that it's a problem. Um, the person is overwhelmed and embarrassed by the clutter. Um, and she had talked about how that is very important, that if they're not wanting it to be how it is, it's easier to work with. And Humphrey and I can attest that that is true. Um, there's some people who, um, you know, they, they don't like it, but they understand and they do it. And they're able to either avoid condemnation by working with us from the beginning um, and getting a dumpster or getting help to get in there and clear the items. Um, or being displaced and then understanding that, you know, oh, I have to be out of my home. I have to pay for a hotel. I have to pay for cleaners, you know, things when it when it gets them um, somehow, whether it's um, financially or otherwise, and they understand, OK, this is why I have to do this. This is why I have to change. Um, and then the individual's family and community are affected by the clutter. So, you know, are there kids in the home? Are there neighbors? Do they have bed bugs? Do they have roaches? Do they have mice? You know, it's really hard to address those types of things if there are um, excessive items in the home. Um, I love horses. That's no secret. <laughs> um, and I, I use this quite a bit when I work with people and it's it's helpful. It's kind of silly. But um, so maybe maybe you're a fan of racehorses. Racehorses have the, the blinders, too. And I'll actually have people put their hands up against their eyes, just like an Amish horse with their blinder or a racehorse with their blinder. And I'll have them just kind of scan across the room and pick a spot. And don't worry about what's back here, what's over here, what's over here. Just focus on one spot and set a timer, put some music on, whatever it is that's going to get them going. Um, and usually I'll help them, you know, like for 15 minutes or something. There are cases like way back when I was new and I didn't have quite as many projects on my, um, on my plate. Um, I do work with suicide prevention as well. I'm very passionate about that. Um, but as we have this program, um, there are now 47 cases this year that I've gone out with Humphrey. And some of them are kind of a one or two, three conversations. Um, some people think that, you know, it's built squalor hoarding and it's not. There, there is a spectrum and um, we, we, we go out and we talk to all of them, but some are more intense than others. They have more needs and it takes time. There could be um, a week that you work with somebody, there could be two, three months. Um, there's still some people I worked with initially that I still have contacts with. You just build that relationship. And when they have questions, um, they, they reach out to me, you know, where do I get my COVID booster? My, I fell and I hurt my leg. Where do I go? You know, it's just different things. I don't have groceries. Um, my daughter's suicidal, you know, so on and so forth. Um, so back to the blinders, focus on one area. Um, and just really set that timer for 15 minutes and, and just try to focus on that one area and not getting overwhelmed and understanding that it didn't happen overnight. It's not going to go away overnight. And take pictures as you go because it's sometimes so cluttered that it's hard to see that you've even made a difference. So if they can take a picture before they start, take a picture as they're going, and then to see the finished product, I think that is a really good indicator of, okay, this is really working. Um, so try not to get distracted, try not to get overwhelmed. Do they have money or do they qualify for services for people to come in and help them? You know, are there donating, selling, keeping um, different items in the home, duplicates, 
Um, keep them motivated. Don't overdo it. Avoid burnout. Um, like I said, set a timer. That's very helpful. And just because the timer goes off doesn't mean you have to stop. Um, keep going. Um, create a plan. Start small. Do a checklist. Everybody's different and every time is different. Um, and another thing I, I'd say is it's easier to keep up than catch up. And that resonates with people. Um, it's also a balancing act, safety concerns with code violations. So like, I don't live there. They live there. This is their home. We're not going to come in with white gloves and say, oh, your, your house is too dirty. You can't be here. Um, but it, it is a balancing act. How can they be comfortable and safe in their home, but also meet the expectations that we have from them and understanding that um, that hoarding and keeping those items come from things like trauma, loss, grief, food insecurity, um, things of that sort. So um, just trying to understand the reasons why, how long has this been going on um, and helping them decide what, what stays, what goes, but ultimately it's it's their decision. So just coming to an agreement. Um, I had this picture, it was funny. So Humphrey had actually, he looks in refrigerators too, and he opened a freezer that was um, kind of a, a Jenga, if you will. And um, the person's like, step back, I'll put it back. <laughs> so um, mindful versus mindful. And if you're not familiar with mindfulness, look it up. It's it's good for yourselves and for the people that we work with. So mindful is like all this stuff is going on in your mind. It's just full, you're anxious, you're stressed, you're distracted, you're rushed, you're worried, you're overwhelmed. Um, and mindful is just kind of being present and being calm. So you're relaxed, you're aware, you're focused, you're self-paced, you're controlled. Um, so mindful mind versus being mindful, never having enough time versus having all the time in the world, being distracted by your surroundings versus um, so on and so forth. Um, so I just want to go through these pictures quickly and I'm watching the time. So this is one of the cases that Humphrey and I had worked with locally. This did take a couple of months. Um, I had gone in with um, veteran services, actually like volunteers, boots on the ground. I was helping, they were helping. Um, you really have to be careful with the volunteers that you get because initially going into this case, they had talked about going through one of the similar trainings that I had gone through. And I thought, oh, okay, they get it. It's not just about the stuff and you can't just throw the stuff because people are comforted by the stuff and they'll just get more stuff if you just throw it away or they'll dig it out of the dumpster. Um, so that was kind of tricky to work through that because they didn't do it the same way I did. Like we were in different rooms and I thought things were going well. Um, fast forward to the end, it, it worked out fine, but just a, a learning curve for all of us. Um, so this was the bathroom. Um, there, I, there must have been a plumbing issue. There was like toilet paper and things in the bags here. Um, not very glamorous. Um, so this is our before. This is our after. They got a new toilet. They replaced the floor. There's an access to the the crawl space down below. This is uh, before, during, and after in the kitchen. So as you can see, you know, just very filthy down the fronts of the cupboards. Um, there were and and actually, I think this is not even like before. I think this is kind of a midway because it was way up here, like pizza boxes, garbage, um, all kinds of things. Um, so this is, again, not before, before. This was like during. This is midway thinking, oh, gosh, we had a lot of water damage. Are we able to salvage? And had Humphrey come back and inspect and see, you know, are, are we able to get through this? So just collaborating and, and communicating throughout the process. And then this is after when it was cleaned. Um, another room, so this is standing there looking um, dining room into the kitchen. And as you can see, um, there's quite a bit of clutter, lots of paper, cat food just literally dumped on the floor. Um, this is after. Um, bedroom before and after, um, and again, encouraging them to, you know, get rid of that recliner. It's not serving you. It's um, humped and bumped and springs are wore out. Same thing with the mattress. It was filthy. It was wore out. I used to sell furniture. It's not good for your body. Um, so just encouraging them to purge it. I can help you replace it for free. So before and after with that. Um, back bedroom, the picture is taken at a different angle, but it just kind of shows you that the room was very full. 
um, versus what it looked like afterwards. Living room, um, we've got newspaper mountain over here. I'm 5'4", it was very close to that. Um, and this is two pictures spliced together to show the full length of the, the room. It was just incredible before and after. Um, so just kind of pointing out some resources I used to pull some images, um, drawing attention back to Carla's presentations. And then Humphrey and I's contact information. If you have any questions, if you um, want to call or email, I have both of our phone numbers, emails. Um, look, La Crosse County is accredited, our, our address, our front desk number. Um, so I'll just, I'll pause and throw it to questions. I was going to ask Humphrey if I forgot anything, but I know we're running short. Um, so I'll just, I'll stop in case anyone has any questions. So it does look like we have one in chat. It says, sorry, I joined a bit late and may have missed this. What occurred that required your presence in the home? So I guess Humphrey receives all of the, the complaints and he decides if he feels that it's something that, um, that I should go with him on. Um, long story short, with this one, there was a water leak. So they had to shut off water to the outside of the home. It was the middle of winter. Um, we came in with city inspectors. So it was condemned by the city as well as the county um, because of filth, squalor, hoarding, and no water. So at that point, um, I was able to have just, and sanitarians and city inspectors are, are busy. I mean, that's what you guys do. You know it's busy. I have the time to sit down and talk about, you know, who are your natural supports? Do you have family? Do you have friends? Do you have neighbors that can help you? Are you a veteran? Are you connected to a social worker? So just kind of slowing it down and not only helping them identify, well, where are you going to go? Because your home is condemned on day one. And on day one, they did um, get a plumber over there and get water corrected. But then we're still left with water damage and excessive filth and squalor and hoarding. So um, that was why I was pulled into this case. Other times, if there's kids in the home or vulnerable adults, um, just seeing, do you have anyone to work with? How can you work through this? Um, social support. Hopefully that answers your question. Yeah, and it looks like it said, thank you for clarifying. Um, and we do have another question. Second, oh, yeah. Second question. Okay. Um, are there orders that are written for cleanup in these cases? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Humphrey does his um, inspection. And then there's always a letter that goes out afterwards to both the landlord and to the client that, you know, if there's things on the landlord side, maybe there's, um, you know, appliances, furnaces, um, fire alarms, uh, water plumbing, so on and so forth, um, the letter goes to both parties um, and it's it's specified, number one, you need to have smoke alarms, number two, you need to fix your plumbing. And we try to be specific too, because if you just say clean up clutter, like they, they don't really understand what that means. So um, I, there's been times where I've really taken the time to um, to sort it out and, and write a letter, you know, living room, this is what you need to do. Kitchen, this is what you need to do because this is their natural environment. And to them, it's okay. Or maybe they know all oh, there's cat or dog feces on the floor. I understand that I need to shampoo my carpet, but why can't it be like this? So yes, there are corrective orders that, that are written and we do re-inspections and we do mid inspections. I always encourage people to call me, um, you know, or we can do a, a check back either together or one or the other. Um, and then we can do pictures or videos and consult one another uh, and give them direction to get back in their home or get it corrected. Building inspections department. Um, if, if the complaint comes to the county, we go out um, and that is sort of Humphrey's role, I guess, if it's more of a um, like lighting or um, I, I don't, I don't know. I guess that's not really my role, but if it's something that's not really Humphrey's niche, then he can pull in the city to make sure that that gets corrected. Humphrey, do you want to add anything about that? I can't hear you. 
Barely. Can you speak up a little bit? Can you hear me? All right. Yeah. So when I go in inside the house for inspections, I, I also look for smoke detectors. And then um, I look at the, the structure of the building, like inside and outside. And then uh, when I see something questionable, I will also involve the, uh, the building, like the city inspectors. And then uh, they'll go there to go do the inspection as well. And then they'll, they'll let me know like what they find. Another uh, possibly quick one here. Have those who've made significant improvements to their living environment satisfactorily maintained it? So far, that's that's what we're seeing. Um, and we actually presented to the board not long ago and the pictures that I showed for that individual, um, I stopped back to personally invite them to, to share their case um, because we were presenting to the board what Humphrey and I do and they wanted a lived experience story. Um, they said no, but allowed some family friends that were very heavily involved in their case um, and were kind of that pivotal piece that made things come together. Um, they allowed them to share their story on their behalf. But um, fast forward a couple months from when, this case was a couple months from day one condemn it to reinspection, um, uncondemn it, they're living there. Okay, so fast forward again, a couple more months, I'm knocking on the door, coming in for a conversation to invite them to speak to the board. And there was very little that needed to be done. You know, they um, they enjoy reading the newspaper. They had a couple um, word finds on the floor, but it, it looked really good. Um, but we did get them connected to somebody that was coming in and making sure that, um, and, and that's voluntary. You know, it, they don't have to do it, but, um, you know, the af afterwards they they liked it and they've been able to maintain that cleanly environment. And several others too, you know, there's, there's many that still call me, like I said, and um, the homes that I've been back to or phone calls that I've, I've had, um, they do have caseworkers that are in some homes. Um, and in one particular case that I'm thinking about, the in-home worker was actually someone who had called in and asked it to be condemned. And that's their social worker. I'm a social worker. And the only thing different that I did was kind of be their cheerleader, if you will, you know, just really listening to them, figuring out how long has it been like this? How did this start? Um, what's yours? What's not yours? There was a a relationship that dissolved and there were things left there that weren't there. I got them a dumpster. We were able to work through that um, and just getting them connected to other services for mental health supports and um, looking at what's available in your community. We have what's called the Lighthouse, which is a, a peer run respite facility. It's self referral um, and it's just a home in the community and it's free you can go and they have they have a food uh, they have you know they cook food you have your own bedroom there's a, a shared living space you can come and go as you want it's just kind of a, a drop-in spot so um, find out what's available in your community and and don't be afraid to point people in a direction it's up to them whether or not they use it but if they don't know it's there then they can't use that support We'll keep going just a little bit. Got a, another question here, more for Humphrey. Um, have you been through any building inspection training involving electrical or structural components, or uh, is your inspection based on reasonable person standards of what you would find in need of repair? I've never done uh, in, in training on uh, the, the, the building detail. Uh, yeah, I can't hear you. I don't know why if I can't hear him. <laughs> can you guys hear him? I just don't want people to not be able to hear you. It's very soft. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I, I don't know what to do because the volume is um uh, is up high over here. Okay. Yeah, so I've never done uh any, any training for the building inspection. But uh, but like when I go in, for example, like the electric like outlets, if they have no covers, 
that's uh, that's very basic. You know, I can tell that oh, it's supposed to have a cover, and then I, I can inform the um, the building inspector if they're not there. So the, the same with the building inspectors. You know, they've, they've never done like our training, but uh, when when they go out, they, they they let us know like what they find. Okay. Um, if a home is owner occupied, um, probably versus a rental, is it anything different about how you would handle the case? I'm not sure if you want to direct that to me or Humphrey, but I'll, I'll answer. And then if you want to share anything, Humphrey, um, if it's owner occupied, I guess, um, pretty much the same expectations. If something needs to be fixed, it needs to be fixed. And you're either telling them directly or sending a letter to the landlord. There have been some tricky situations where people feel like um, they are afraid for their landlord to know what it looks like inside the home. And if it's drawn attention to them that they might be evicted. Um, you know, there's some landlords that don't go in and they have no idea that all they that although they've been renting from this landlord for 10 years, you know, there's cat feces and there's 20 cats and there's hoarding and things like that. So sometimes people will say, you know, let me talk to the landlord first. And if they, if they won't fix it, then go ahead and send the letter, but we have to do our job too. So um, whether it's owner occupied or a rental, whoever needs to know, is is drawn attention to that. Do you have anything to add, Humphrey? If, uh, if, if the owner if the owner of the house has problem with the like anything to fix in the house, like the process is the same. So what we do is uh, we'll talk to like volunteers, like retired volunteers, like who are very handy. If I uh, they need to fix a donor with that person owns the house. They, they still go over there and, and fix the donor. So the resources they are available for everybody, whether you own the house or you rent the house. So we, we don't try to discriminate, you know, because uh, even uh, homeowners, they have no money like to fix whatever they're supposed to fix. Maybe if they need a toilet, uh, Kalin has uh, some money somebody donated some money for the toilet, then we, we find that toilet, you know. So what Humphrey's referring to is we have a, a resource locally, it's RSVP, Retired Senior Volunteer Program, and they're retired professionals. They could be, you know, a handyman, they could be a plumber, an electrician, and they volunteer their time as a retired person. So all the labor is free. And if they need to purchase something, so say their toilet's not fixing and they need to buy like the guts of the toilet to fix it, or um, the doorknob is broken or the door needs to be replaced, they purchase the items and then they bill the client. So they can pay in full, they can make payments to them, but the labor is free. And just because they're a homeowner doesn't mean they're they're doing okay financially. You know, they might live in a mobile home, they might live in a, a beautiful home in a very nice neighborhood and still be barely making it. So I'm um, just trying to offer resources and supports to anyone that needs it, like you were saying. Okay, um, we're getting a little over our time, but I'll ask this last question because it's probably a quick one um, and then we'll wrap up. Uh, for your jurisdiction there, is this complaint based or can you inspect a property? For other reasons? So when I hear that question, I, I think a few different things. I'll try to answer it. And then Brian, if it doesn't fit what you're saying, um, definitely come off of mute and, and we can talk about it more. Um, typically, we go out for complaints. Um, and it could be self-referral. It could be the pizza delivery man, the repair man, um, the landlord, the neighbor, a family member, whoever is calling in the, the complaint. We do get from fire medics. Um, yes, that that happens quite often. Um, but with that, um, shoot, I lost my train of thought. Um, oh, sorry, I'm back. 
<laughs> um, I did get a call from a social worker that um, did not call in an actual complaint, but sort of, and this is important too, like early intervention is where it's at. If you can catch it when it starts to get messy and you're like, ooh, this is really a slippery slope. How do we recover where we don't have to condemn or file a, a, a true complaint? Um, so a social worker called and said, you know, I, I have this family and there's fruit flies, there's a ton of laundry, there's toys, there's garbage, so on and so forth. Can you come give them some tips on how to clean their home or maybe some resources to help them? Um, so that wasn't like an official complaint. It was just more of a, a professional courtesy that I came out and, and walked through the home and with them, you know, the other social worker and I, I set a timer for 15 minutes, both of the kids, the parent, um, and both of us workers set that timer for 15 minutes and just put on our blinders. We all picked our spots and then we looked at what it looked like after 15 minutes and 15 minutes isn't long. But to look at what was done in 15 minutes was huge. Um, there was also a call that came in from um, energy assistance where someone had called requesting help for um, a furnace repair. Um, lots of issues. Um, repair people are refusing to go into the home because of filth, squalor, feces, hoarding. Um, and it, it's, it's not our case. It was condemned by the city but I had several in-person meetings with them coming here. I've never been to that home, um, but I did help them with a dumpster, um, actually two dumpsters, 40 yard dumpsters, where they were able to fill it. And now they're on the cleaning phase. And once it gets clean, they're gonna be able to get plumbers and repair people in, get a different furnace, move back in. And that was condemned from the city back in February. So again, not our case, but just like, this is really a unique thing. Um, People don't have social workers to do this. They come in, they condemn it, they they give them their corrective orders, and that's kind of the end of it. So I don't know if that answers the question that you had. I think so. Um, and with that, we'll we'll wrap it up. Um, thank you, Carlene and Humphrey, for this presentation. Um, it was not re repeated from the previous two sessions this earlier summer. It was really good add-on, a uh, different way of tackle on this this uh, issue um we do not yet quite have the january uh topic finalized so keep an eye out in december you'll get that it will actually be a microsoft teams invite um from our new new platform we're shifting to out of out of zoom um but thank you all for attending and you can if you join later or, or want to watch again um it's on the Weha side in the YouTube channel. And of course, any follow-up questions, you can reach out to Carlene and Humphrey. Yes. Thank you so much.